what's going on guys welcome back today we're doing incident handling with splunk uh the room is from as you can see try and try hack me site and we're going as you can see it's pretty long challenge or room i'm gonna be i'm gonna be i'm gonna try to be as quick as possible so basically deploy the machine and you were investigating a hacked website so you can see the scenario in here there is a hacked website the website is i'm really i'm really not a batman of course this is a dummy data uh, the website represents an enterprise called wine enterprises so basically we we are required to investigate why the hacked happened in the first place so we are going through the incident response phases okay basically the data is prepared and is pulled uh, from the right sources so as you can see these are the sources from which the data has been pulled windows event logs the registry 40 gig firewall logs web server logs the vulnerability scanner logs the ids logs and a couple other logs so all of these logs have been pulled uh, from the right sources and we're given the data to analyze so basically let's jump right in okay and analyze the data okay so here is the uh, splunk we have here we're going to go to search and reporting okay and from here we start the investigation all right so if you remember in the previous videos we learned how to upload the data to Splunk so basically the first thing you have to do when uploading the data is to define all the index in our case the index here is bot SV1 so that's how we call or search data we use the name of the index bot SV1 all right okay so as you can see we have still counting 80,000 still counting it's not finished yet we have to wait until the event count is settled to be able to analyze So pretty much we have a huge number of logs or events. If we take a look at the left, we can see the interesting fields we can work with. And these fields change depending on the log source. So up until now, we have 16 source type. If we click on source type, we can see we can see representation of the top 10 sources according to the number of logs. So at the top, we have event logs, Windows event log. SMB, here we have the IDS logs, so the CADs and IDS, so on and so forth. We have 40 git firewall. Take a look at the sources. Okay, and the host, we have a couple hosts on this network. Okay. So, the domain name is I am really not Batman. If we try to access the site, I don't know if it's live. It's not. Okay. So basically, that's the site I'm investigating here. And the incident started when the website got defaced. Website defacement is when an attacker gets access to a web server and then takes over the entire server. And after that, they upload an image and place the image on the main page of the site so they you can see uh, you will see like um, something different from the what the original site offers it's like website defacement so i want to know how the attackers um, found the site what scanner tools they did so typically here we're going through the cyber kill chain first we want to understand how the attackers uh, got into the uh, web server Want to find out how they scan the website with the vulnerabilities they uncovered so we can click on search here okay so we have around seventy-eight thousand um events related to the i'm really not a batman 
but still we need to filter more the traffic here could be any type of traffic since we are ingesting the logs from various sources we need to define what kind of what kind of, what, what is the protocol we're um, uh, interested in so basically we can go down and choose source type in the source type we can select stream hey http why because we are investigating a hacked website okay so we have 22,000 events okay now basically all the events here represent the traffic that um, traversed the web and went to the I'm really not Batman the website that got hacked okay now on the left you can see the interesting fields okay now basically if we scroll down we can see also the source this source IP as well take a look here we have two IP addresses as you can see we have one that contains 17,000 events and one with only 1,000 events so since we are investigating the hacked website we're really interested to understand the why the difference is so huge between these two IPs so let's click, click, look, click on the first one and we have again yeah 17,000 events these events represent the traffic that originated from this IP address okay to the website okay now if we scroll up scroll up take a look at the source types so we have one it is the HTTP let's see here the if there is a clue on the re URL request that have been made from this IP address URL path URL okay as you can see these are the top 10 URLs that have been uh, accessed from this IP address as you can see uh, we can we can take uh, the hints from here that the website I'm not really a Batman the victim website is using Joomla right if you take a look at the URL path as you can see this is administrator administrator page of the website Joomla so all of these URLs um, have been accessed by the source IP address I have shown you so basically most probably this is the IP address of the attacker so that IP address okay was used by the attacker to enumerate the website I'm not really Batman so right now we have uncovered uh, a clue about the source of the attack this is the IP address okay now now understand the source IP address and what is the website infrastructure or the technology CMS has been used on this site and also we understand what are the URLs that have been accessed now let's see if we remove the source type HTTP we want to see if there are any IDS alerts that have been raised from this source IP address okay if we click on source type we have two more source types you can investigate beside HTTP we have Suricata IDS we have the firewall let's click on the Suricata IDS and see what kind of alerts that have been raised uh, from this source IP address so we have 17,000 events if we scroll down we look one to we're looking for alerts if we don't have the field we can add it from 19 more fields if you click on the 19 more fields here you can see the alert action alert category alert signature let's take a look scrolling up alert action category okay so these are the alerts that have been raised by Suricata when this IP browsed to the site against the activity of this IP address as you can see on the top we have the category web application attack we have 214 events 48 network trojan was detected attempted administrator privilege gain so it's safe to say that the attacker launched the attacks against the website um, using this IP address 
if we click on the application attack we can narrow these events down to 248 and from here we can find out we can gain more insights on the um, alerts that have been raised let's stay let's take this one so this one is categorized or was categorized as SQL injection attempt against the site okay if we remove this one and take a look at the other categories attempted administrator privilege game let's see this one and here you have CVEs as you can see 2014 6 271 let's take a look at this one CVE 2014 most probably this is the CVE that the attacker used to gain access to the server Oh no, it is not, it is 27, 271, let's see here, GNU bash through 4.3 processes trailing strings after function definitions in the values of environment variables, which allows attackers to execute arbitrary code via crafted environment as demonstrated by vectors involving force command feature in OpenSSH, the mode CGI and mode CGI D modules in the Apache server. Okay, so now we understand more what happened. So the website, I'm not really Batman, is vulnerable to this CVE. And that's how the attacker got access to the web server. Now, actually here, but how they uncovered the vulnerability, if we scroll down, we can take a look at the user agent. If not the user agent, we can see we have two fields for user agent. Okay. We want to see what kind of scanner they used. URL. Yeah, indeed. As you can see, all of the requests have uh, targeted the CGI directory. Which means this is the main vulnerability that caused the incident. HTTP URL, the same. All right. Okay. So now, we have uncovered some of the facts about the attack. Now let's answer a couple of questions found in the tasks. So first, on Suricat alert highlighted the CVE associated with the attack attempt with the CVE value we already answered. What's the CMS or, or web server is using? It's Joomla, we answered this. What's the web scanner the attacker used to perform the scanning attempts? What's the IP address of the server? I am really not a Batman. So here we want to find out the source IP address of the hacked website how I find out this, yes and what's the name of the scan it was Acunetics but how I found this, let me show you here okay so if we remove the alert from here so why I'm choosing the uh, IDS as a source type here here we are investigating the how the attack happened from the perspective of um, the technicality of the exploitation and the vulnerability scanning okay so the only thing that can shed insights on these uh, or have visibility on this uh, the traffic it is uh, the ids it's not the fire maybe the firewall sometimes but it's not definitely not the windows event logs it is actually the network centric logs and suricata has visibility on the network centric logs that's why we're reviewing the suricata ids logs so basically let's see here if we scroll down, if we click on the user agent, as you can see, <coughs> we can see a signature that indicates 
Acunutix. And Acunutix is a very well-known vulnerability scanner that would lead you guys to uh, conclude that the web scanner that has been used to scan the site is Acunutix. Now, the source IP or the IP address of the, I'm not really Batman, let's see if we have destination IP field here. We have source, destination, we have two. As you can see, we have two IP addresses, but it's very obvious that the first one is the destination IP address of, or the IP address of the victim site, because it has the most event counts, right? So that is the IP address of the site. So right now we have uncovered the attacker's IP address. We uncovered how the uh, vulnerability has been uncovered. And also we found out what was the vulnerability that the attacker leveraged to access the web server. So right now, the next thing, we want to move on from the, from the scanning phase into the exploitation phase. What happened after the attacker got access to the uh, server? So these are the questions that cover the next task. The first question was what IP address is likely attempting a brute force password attack against I am not really Batman. So again, here is another thing happened during the attack. It was a brute force attempt on the site. So before moving on to the exploitation phase and what happened after gaining access, let's first uncover this. Okay, let's find out how the attackers um, brute force the site and from which IP address. Okay, so previously we found out that the site of I'm not really Batman is using Joomla as a CMS. And also we uncovered the administrator page of Joomla. So if a brute force attack happened, most probably it targeted the admin page. So if we use a filter, okay, so let's remove these and go back to zero. We select the source type to be, of course, hey HTTP. Okay, and the next thing, next thing we want, let's take a look at the fields here. So destination IP, let's use the IP address of the um, target server. I want to filter the HTTP requests that were targeted against the administrator page in Joomla. So if we scroll down, we use the URL field here and we click on Joomla slash administrator slash index. This will filter all of the events, all the traffic that went against this page. So from here we can uncover more uh, facts about how the brute force attack happened. Let's take a look at an example. So this one, let's see. This one is a normal uh, request. Okay, let's take a look at the left. Okay, so we have here form data. If we click on form data, okay, we can see all of the attempts. Okay, so we have plus 100 form data. So let's do this. If we scroll up, we want to see all of these sorted in a table. So if we sort it using table time, a table sorted by time, that includes the source IP address. Okay, we take these, uh, we are, I'm writing these filters from the uh, fields here, okay. The source IP address that initiated the request, and then we put the destination IP address, the, um, you know, the web server and form data. So, as you can see, this is the source IP address that uh, was initiating the brute force attack. Take a look at the form data here, username, admin, task equal login, return, and password equals Scorpion. These are all of the brute force attempts that were made against the server by this IP address. So here's another IP address uh, that was involved in the attack. The first IP address was involved in uncovering the vulnerability. 
this IP address attack used to launch brute force. So we have two IP addresses the attacker has used. And here we see all of the attempts against the server. Now, if we want to extract or we want to do some filtering and tweak on the data, say we want to isolate the username only and the password because we have many other fields. Okay, so what we can do here, we can use the Splunk processing language to do that. So form data equal username. Well, I'm not sure. Let me see the notes here. If we have something about filtering, let's type HTTP. Parsing HTTP traffic, investigating logs, post requests, regular expression to display username and password in HTTP request. Yeah, so we can isolate them using this formula. The star or asterisk username, asterisk password. Of course, depending on the field name. Here we have the field name, username, and the password represents the password. So pass WD. Let's see. Zero events. Wait, how about this? Um, not perfect, but we got, uh, uh, we eliminated some of the extra fields. Now I think we must use the regular expressions. Let's see. So we can use regular expression to isolate maybe the username or the password. So let's use this one. Let's isolate the username. Oh, the username was clear actually. It was only admin. Okay. So let's isolate the password. We have to put here using pipe and paste into regular expression. Form data, password, user password. Okay. So here, this uh, name is actually uh, optional. You can use whatever name you want. Enter. Still, we are not successful. Let's take a look at the field. So, bot sv1, not really Batman. The source is HTTP. Destination IP. Okay. So, maybe we have to go back. Let's copy this one. Maybe we have to filter according to the HTTP requests. So we have to specify what kind of request we are interested in. So we are interested in post requests. So here we have one post request. Yeah, it's only one. Okay, 413 events. Okay. Let's paste these. And let's use this one. Okay, so let's remove form data from here. And here, as you can see, guys, we can see all of the passwords that were attempted against the Joomla panel, right? Now, if you want to find out the exact password, Okay, so basically all of these passwords, not all of them are right, like they're right. So there is only one single password that worked with the attacker. Maybe we have to find out this password. But up until now, it's good. Let's answer some questions. So this is the IP address that initiated the brute force. What was the URL which got multiple brute force attempts? We answered this one. Against which username was the brute force attempt made? We showed that it was admin. What was the correct password for admin access to the content management system running I'm not really Batman? Okay, so here we are back one step. If you want to find the correct password, we have to take a look again at the other interesting fields here. So specifically, if we look at the maybe the response code or let's see here, what do we have? Response time request content so that's the content in the request 
source IP we have two so in the source IP as you can see we have 412 for the IP that initiated the brute force attempts and we have one attempt from this IP address if you remember this IP address was used to launch the attack and exploited the vulnerability this is CGI vulnerability so if you click on this IP address see why it has only one request post request let's take a look at this one orphan request these are the headers so it navigated to the admin page and here we see the data source content admin and password equal batman and as you can see the response was we scroll down the status was 303 which means that this is the correct password guys batman so the attacker launched the attacks from a different ip address and logged in using another different IP address okay back here so the password is Batman how many unique passwords were attempted in the brute force attempt well this is self-explanatory guys if you go back and check out if you uh, remove this so in total we have 413 events right so one attempt with the correct password and another 400 wealth for the non-correct passwords so you can calculate the difference after finding the correct password which IP did the attacker use to log into the admin panel we have already covered this okay so right now we covered the brute force attack and we covered the vulnerability exploitation so right now let's proceed guys and find out what the attacker did after they got access to the server okay normally after the attacker gets access to a server um, they try to maintain their access so they would plant a backdoor so let's go back a bit in the source and see if they have uploaded something to the server so we can keep the http as is we can keep the destination ip as is we can remove these so you want to see if there is something that was uploaded specifically we're looking for files so let's see here on the fields form data well this is too generic we have to specify if we type an extension like exe We have 17 events. Okay, scrolling down. And all the way down, guys. Packets in, packets out. We have 12 more fields. We want to un uncover more artifacts related to the file that has been uploaded and has the extension. If we can find something about the path name so nothing in here scroll back up URL path So we have this file, we have this file as well, and we have other files. The, so there was not only a single file, we, we cannot find the file this way. Let's go back to 12 more fields and see if we can find something about the path. So we can sort the data according to the path of the file. Packets in part file name. So we have two, we have one agent 
with PHP and 13791 executable file. So let's take a look at this one. So indeed we have one event and this executable uh, seems to have been originated from which IP address? Let's take a look if we have source IP here. Source date. Okay. Okay, so we have one file here. As you can see, upload successful. This file has been uploaded, but we want to find out uh, who uploaded the file, which IP address, right? Is it the IP address that initiated the brute force attack or it is the IP address that initiated the vulnerability exploitation of the CVE? So we can remove all of these and take a look at um, what are the source types that got visibility on this uh, file. Seventy six events. Well, so it seems like more than one event regarding this file. It wasn't only uploaded, there were other things uh, done with this file. So let's take a look at the source types. We have event logs, the also sysmon logs, he sysmon and he event logs, HTTP 40 gate and suricata. Okay, great. So if we filter, if we take a look at the sys monitor events, you can see we have 69 events. Now sys monitor is a very useful tool you can install on any Windows workstation where you have to monitor for specific actions taken against the registry or the uh, you know the other files of the system regarding the, the directory the system the file system directory and um, the process creation. If we take a look at the event IDs, we have these event IDs. Okay, so we want to see if this file has been executed. So we're going to use the event code 1 or event ID 1. We have event code here, 7135. For 1, 1 it means process creation. If we click on this one, so we have 5 events. It means that this executable, after it was uploaded, the attacker executed this um, executable and here we have a new according to the source type it is this monitor we can see the command line as well so we have five commands the CMD and as, as you can see the execution of this file if you click on this Okay, so this file indeed got executed on the host. Let's answer a couple of questions here. Sysmon also collects the hash value of the processes being created. What's the MD5 hash of the program 3791? We will find this. Looking at the logs, which user executed the program and search the hash on the virus total? What other username or what other name is associated with the file? Okay. Let's find the hash first. So probably we can find the hash from here. Yeah, this is it. As you can see, it starts from here, MD5. Start with AA. I'm going to highlight this. So it starts from here, MD5. This is the MD5 of the file. Now we want to find out the user who executed it. So if we scroll down, we can see in the event details, the username, as you can see, is net authority user. And now we will search the hash on virus total. So let's copy that. So by searching the hash on virus total, we get more insights on the nature of the file that the attacker uploaded and executed on the server. Bicycles. I don't see any bicycles. Skip. Traffic lights. I think it's because of the VPN. I'm going to close the VPN.
Okay. So it's indeed a malicious file. In the details, we can see other names given to the file. And these are the other properties, the hashes of the file. You can see what the community has to say, what are the contributions. So, indeed, it is a Trojan horse uploaded to the uh, machine. Okay. All right. So now, as you can see, guys, we uncovered what the attacker planted on the server to maintain their access. Okay. Now I want to find out what are the things the attacker did okay after they maintain their access so normally the attacker exploits the website of first they do the reconnaissance they exploit uh, the vulnerability if they found any and they get access to the server they upload a backdoor which was this executable in our case and then they start to um, implement the strategy or implement the goal okay uh, for which they come after the victim. So basically, we're looking to see if there is a pattern of pattern of data transfer or data exfiltration. So to do that, we want to change the source from here. So remove all of these. Okay, so we're not going to wait for this one. We're going to choose the source tab to be the IDS. So why the IDS? Because normally that exfiltration events or logs, uh, you get alerts on these type of events by the IDS or the firewall. For now, I'm going to choose the IDS. And if that exfiltration happened on a, uh, a victim machine, we're going to need to filter by the source IP. The source IP will be the machine itself because the machine will send the request to the attacker. So it's going to be the, the reverse. The machine will be the source IP and the destination IP will be the attacker server, which are which is receiving the data. So we're looking to find if there is a field for source IP here. We have one. So we're looking for the IP address of the I am really Batman, which was this one. Okay, now let's take a look at the destination IP addresses. Up until now, we have, confir we have confirmed two IP addresses belonging to the attacker. If you click on destination, we have indeed two. The first one, which initiated the vulnerability exploitation, and the first one, uh, the, the second one, uh, which initiated the brute force. Okay, so we can have an insight on both of these. Let's take a look at the first one. So we have 10,300 events. Let's take a look at what kind of requests have been initiated. Take a look at the fields here. So we have HTTP URL. Okay, so these are the Joomla. Let's see if we have URL. URL we have and again, these are requests against the Joomla. So if we scroll up, okay, let's now select the other IP address. Probably there's nothing, nothing clear from here. We are looking for a pattern, okay, where data would originate from this IP address, the victim IP to the uh, destination IP and having some sort of data exfiltration patterns, right? So we're looking for URLs, um, DNS requests, whatever. So let's select other IP address. So we have 1,294 events. If we scroll down, we take a look at URL. We have three. Again, against the administrator page, and we have one. Poison LIVY is coming for you. This is interesting. If you click on this one, we have three events related to this one.
So it's originating from the victim web server to the attacker IP address. Let's take a look at these. Yeah. As you can see, this is a domain associated with the attacker. It shows the DNS resolution of this IP address. So by now, guys, you also uncovered the domain name associated with the, the IP address. So we have a request from the victim web server, the attacker server, to download an image. And probably this is the image, okay, that was uploaded to the site after the defacement. So we have uncovered the image name and we have uncovered also the domain name associated with the attacker um, server. Okay. So that's how, as you can see, that's how the uh, website got defaced in the first place. But still we're looking for if we have other it uh, doesn't seem like we have other um, indications of data that got exfiltrated. We're going to see if we have this later. So now this is the image. Okay. Now let's take a look at the questions here. So if we have something to answer, what's the name of the file that defaced the I'm really not Batman? This is the image. 40 gate firewall, 40 gate UTM source detected SQL attempt from the attacker's IP. What's the name of the rule that was triggered during the SQL injection attempt? Okay, so here we get back one step behind. Let's go back, remove the source type or change the source type. Let's remove these. And um, we want to change the source type to be the 40 gate firewall. We have 40 gate traffic. We want the 40 gate underscore UTM, so we're going to specify this here. Okay, search. And we want to filter for the traffic that originated from the IP address of the attacker source IP, this one. We have 12,000 events. So we have here a field called attack. Click on this one. You can see this is the uh, rule name that is triggered when the attacker attempted SQL injection. So that answers your question, the last question. Okay, great. Now, there's another question in the next task. The attack used dynamic DNS to resolve to the malicious IP. What fully qualified domain name is associated with this attack? We answered already answered this question. Weaponization phase. Here we do some intel, guys, on the uh, IP address that is associated with the attack. And delivery phase, again, we do some intel on the file. So I will leave the last two tasks for you guys. They are really easy. I have uh, tried my best to make this video as short as possible to explain all of the steps that are related to Splunk. Now, in the task 9 and task 10, you just have the information here, everything is explained. You just have to make some OSINT on the attacker's identity regarding the, just take the values you got from the Splunk outcome. So, it's the IP address, make a lookup, you will find the associated domains and you also will find the other domain names emails okay then so i hope you guys here also a nice conclusion you can see about the outcome of this investigation the findings it's very useful if you read through the findings so i hope you guys find this enjoyable and helpful and i will see you in the next video